Hello, my name is Keith Fraley, one of the founders of 40 Geo, and I'm here to introduce some of our product offerings. So our company's name is 40 Geo. The 40 stands for 4D. It's kind of a play on four dimensions. And we come from a geospatial background, which means that we do a lot of uh, analytics that involve uh, mapping analysis effectively. And uh, time is a critical component to that, as we'll get into. Our platform is called Raptor. Uh, Raptor Geo IoT. So IoT is kind of a buzzword. You may have heard it. It stands for Internet of Things. Basically, the idea that more and more everything is going to be connected to the Internet and you can start to derive intelligence from the sensors that are connected to the Internet. And we believe that where those where those sensors are is paramount uh, to almost any type of intelligence that you want to uh, derive. So, like I said, the reason that we do that uh, is in support of solutions, right? We're solutions based companies, so we, we do it in support of remote monitoring, exception based surveillance, supply chain optimization, common operational picture and competitive intelligence. And this is just uh, some of the screenshots of our platform. So we're partnered with some of the biggest players in the software industry. So we we've partnered with a satellite analytics company called Spire. They give us uh, access to their uh, firehose of global AIS data. And we actually have uh, become their official uh, provider of, of backend mapping solutions. Uh, that deal just went down this week. So uh, this is an example of their data rolled up into another partner of ours called ESRI. So this is data that we manage for Spire uh, inside of an Esri uh, ESRI geospatial application, but it's, it's through our servers that we're hosting that data, if that makes sense. Now, putting AIS data on a map is fairly straightforward. It's been around for quite some time, but deriving intelligence, geospatial intelligence from those, those movements is, uh, is kind of where it's all going. And on the left-hand side here, you can see uh, we're monitoring the, the Port of Galveston. So every vessel that goes into or leaves uh, the Port of Galveston within 1,000 meters, we keep an eye on it and uh, keep a historical log of it. Uh, this is another screenshot of... Uh, polygon outlines of the boats with AIS, you know, the, the dimensions of the vessels are, are broadcast. So it can really start to provide context if we can uh, if we can build those polygons uh, in real time. So you can start to see big boats versus small boats. We also do a lot of historical aggregation of vessel movements and you can slice and dice this by type. So if you just wanted to see tanker movements or cargo ships, uh, the, this is about a billion points in the month of April, I believe, or I'm sorry, uh, March through, uh, so, so the month of March of this year. This is about a billion points aggregated. The heat maps show you, obviously, where the, the different shipping lanes are. Uh, same thing here in the Port of Galveston. Uh, here we do real-time aggregation uh, of data. So this is uh, not cache information. This is real-time information uh, of vessel movement. So obviously, the hotter the color, the more, the more boats there are. And uh, we also keep all the historical data, obviously, so we can recreate the tracks uh, of any, any vessel that we manage uh, for folks. But enough with the screenshots. Let's go ahead and take a look at some actual data. <clears throat> this is a, uh, a demonstration dashboard that we've put together for our partner, Spire. Uh, like I said, they, they do satellite um, analytics. They have a constellation of small microsats, and they're monitoring vessel movements in, in ADSB, which is the aircraft equivalent. So here we, we have, you know, obviously the heat map of real-time vessel movements, but we're also monitoring FPSOs. So FPSO stands for floating production and storage uh, offshore. So uh, I come from an oil and gas background. And, and if you monitor the ingress and egress of vessels around FPSOs, you can start to derive intelligence from uh, those, uh, those movements, right? So where that vessel came from, how long it stayed there and then where it, it went from there. You can start to, to see global trends. A lot of our trading desk uh, at Royal Dutch Shell, where I used to work, we're, we're interested in these kind of movements. So if we look at uh, the FPSO flum fluminescence, we'll just go ahead and zoom in here. You can see that not only are we keeping a current, uh, a current uh, status of, of the FPSO, so every, every vessel currently within 500 meters of the FPSO, but we also keep a historical log, right? So, this is all of those historical movements. You know, I can uh, I can click here and get uh, a list of, of all the uh, all the vessels ingress and egress out of there. This, for example, we've got the HOS Achiever, which is a services vessel, uh, was at the FPSO Fluminescence in, in July for a total of eighty one minutes. Right. So, 
like I said, so if you, you monitor this stuff long enough, you can start to put together uh, some, some intelligence around it. This is a global feed from Spire. So we, uh, this is around 24 million records a day that we manage um, for them. And so it's really a matter of being able to find that needle in the haystack. Uh, and what I mean by that is you get this flood of information, but being able to find very granular bits of intelligence in it is, uh, is, is something that's a bit of an art. This is a product, another example of a product that we're about to go to market with. So this is what we call our pop, which is the port operational picture. Uh, every, uh, every yellow dot is uh, a berth that has a vessel currently moored or parked at it. Uh, and then the, the purple dots are basically historical logs of those, of those berths. So I'll go ahead and zoom into Houston. And uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in. Obviously, we're going to pull in the real-time um, vessels uh, like this one here. We'll just go ahead and click on this one. Gives you a bit of information about it. 9.53 today, which was about three minutes ago. Ship name, call sign, MMSI, uh, destination, ETA, all that good stuff. And then if we continue to zoom in, uh, we'll go into the Barber Cut area around Houston. Uh, we'll get a, a pretty good look at um, not only what vessels are here, but uh, what vessels have been here, right? So we've got uh, this specific uh, Northern Power, and this is actually an interesting um, example here because you've got some bunkering going on. So we, we actually monitor uh, for bunkering. We have an algorithm that can detect when bunkering is happening. We, can, uh, we tag the boats uh, that are involved in the bunkering and the location, how long that happened. Uh, so on and so forth. We also keep a historical log, like I said. So we're going to go ahead and click on this berth here at the uh, at the Barber Barber's Cut Terminal, berth number five. Um, this tells me that there's 66 uh, 66 historical uh, records. This specific one is on the fifth uh, ingress on the fifth and left on the sixth. Tells me that it was there for um, 2,000 minutes. Um, so on and so forth. It also tells me the location of the berth, uh, the waterway, the purpose, um, all that, uh, all that information. Um, so it's, it's one thing to be able to monitor that information and to be able to do it at a, um, at a, uh, the scale of the United States. Uh, but we're also driving intelligence from it. I'm going to go just to kind of show that we, we are actually monitoring um, a lot of the different berths in the United States. We're just going to go over here to uh, the Port of New Orleans, zoom in specifically to here, and you'll get a, a list of all the vessels that are currently parked at this specific berth, uh, all that good stuff. So we're, we're able to do that at a global scale, and that's really kind of a testament to our platform that we monitor, uh, I'm sorry, that, we, that we've implemented, but we also do a lot of uh, analytics. So this is uh, the... The kind of the culmination of that information that we're uh, that we're aggregating into an analytical dashboard. This shows me that over the last 24 hours, there's been uh, 5,000. I'm sorry, 5.7 5 million record uh, minutes logged at these specific births, and this will tell you uh, by uh, what are the biggest players, right? So Seattle, New York, Houston, and uh, and I can I can actually click on these and filter these out. So here we filtered uh, the Port of New Orleans, and from that we can um, start to figure out what what berths are actually used in the Port of New Orleans. Uh, so you can see a kind of a list here uh, of those. Uh, and if I want to get even more granular, I can click on specific berths. So we'll go ahead and click on this berth here, Gulf Gateway. And we'll filter even farther down. So when we click on that berth, then we can start to put together, um, you know, what vessels have come and gone from that. You know, what what are the specific types of vessels, the specific names of the vessels, uh, so on and so forth. What they were doing, uh, and all of this can be pushed towards uh, reports, right? So you want at the end of the day, you want that report as a as a PDF, or uh, and you want that run at a, a specific time interval or maybe ad hoc. Uh, that's all part of this platform that we've put together, this kind of analytical platform uh, and um, um, report generation tool. So 
Above and beyond the, the software platform that we've rolled out for folks, uh, we also do hardware implementation. So this is an AIS uh, implementation that we've put together for the Port of Houston. This involves three uh, AIS receivers that are equipped with LTE. So we don't have to worry about uh, kind of that network connection, that local network connection. We use the cellular network in, in, in the area to, to kind of free ourselves to be able to put those receivers and antennas wherever we want. Uh, this shows you that we're monitoring you know, 482 vessels, 100% uh, uptime, all that good stuff. Above and beyond AIS, we've done a lot of implementation with Garmin uh, two-way satellite messengers. Uh, what we really like about these is that they work anywhere in the world, uh, onshore, offshore, doesn't matter. We can read. Not only can we uh, log specific locations of vessels or or whatever, but we can also send messages to and fro. So. Uh, they have an SOS button on them. And really what we use this for is obviously this is kind of a Garmin interface to, to manage those units, but we use it to integrate into our own mapping platform. So uh, Sunshine is actually in uh, Roatan this week uh, doing a variety of different things. One is putting an AIS uh, antenna up uh, on the island, but the other one is uh, rolling out to wet with West Bay divers is to integrate these, uh, these in-reach devices. So these Garmin units on their uh, on their vessels to monitor um, you know where they go where they come from and we can start to do a lot of geofence alerting um, you know what we hope to do is get to the point where where we are with the berths around the united states is monitor what vessels go to what dive sites how long they're there uh, and, and and so on and so forth and the whole point is to kind of put together uh, a package for reef reef preservation right so you can imagine a scenario where, you know, obviously we've got the Garmin units, but we've also got um, AIS. If we got to the point where we could put AIS transponders on, on the dive boats, then we could really start to put together a compelling uh, picture of, of what's actually happening at the reef, where boats are going, um, so on and so forth. So this is, this is a little bit about us. We do a lot of different stuff. Uh, we have onshore projects. Uh, on five different continents, and we uh, we do a lot of stuff offshore. But uh, the point is, is that we're solutions based. So we we're not necessarily interested in throwing software at people. What we really want to do is kind of sit down with people and understand, okay, what are their business challenges, and we want to uh, uh, build solutions to uh, to address those uh, those challenges. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I look forward to your feedback.